Hey Tularinos, welcome to my yarden. I'm calling it a yarden because uh, it's our yard where we grow stuff. You know, in the UK they call their patch of green space their garden regardless of what they do there. Uh, in the United States we typically call it our yard and then if we have a patch of ground that we specifically till or maintain for vegetables. It's all overgrown with weeds there, but that's my garlic and onion garden. <laughs> uh, or where we just have a flower bed where we have flowers. Um, then you know, it's a flower garden. But I like wordplay, so I'm going to call it a yarden. See if I can keep that up. So, welcome to the yarden. And for those of you who don't know what happens to asparagus when you don't uh, keep picking the stalks. This is asparagus. It's huge. I mean, it's way taller than me. I can't reach it. Uh, it's uh, probably a good eight feet off the ground there at the top. But yeah, it turns into these uh, these big sort of ferny fronds, fronds, and this grew volunteer as a weed. Uh, there's another bunch of it that grows in the planter over here. Another clump. And so, it grows like a weed around here. It grows along the farmer's fields and along the roads. So it's kind of interesting. I wonder how many people just don't recognize that that's asparagus growing everywhere. And in this planter, we grow strawberries under these holly bushes. And uh, hardest part is just picking them before the bugs get to them. We have been getting quite a lot of strawberries this year. It was a good year, but uh, I think everybody's about sick of them because nobody's picking them anymore. And I do see one good looking one right here. Now that's a delicious looking strawberry. Yep. So just as an illustration of the uh, the weed asparagus around here, there's one clump. And there's another clump. And there's more asparagus. And here's another uh, later summer view of the asparagus uh, fern in the front of the house. It has sprouted more shoots and it is much thicker and bushy. And, uh, you know, it's big. <laughs> Very big. And it has berries. So I know there's like a male and female asparagus thing that goes on. So uh, we got a mix. Here's something else growing in the garden. Uh, pumpkin vines. We've got one little pumpkin. But there are more uh, flowers and a couple little things starting. So. I'm cautiously optimistic. We'll get a couple more. These were volunteers as well. At the end of the Halloween season, I always throw the uh, pumpkin carcasses in a planter or somewhere where they won't be disturbed if they decide to grow. And uh, there you go. At least three pumpkin vines. Pretty cool. And our volunteer pumpkin plants have produced some pumpkins and some gourds and interesting things. I'm not sure if this giant plant has actually produced anything in there. I'm gonna have to get in there a little deeper. Ooh, look at the size of that spider. Ooh, wouldn't want to meet him. 
There it is. Lots of these green ones. This is our haul from the all the volunteer pumpkins and gourds that were growing under the trampoline. And uh, it's a pretty good haul this year. One nice big pumpkin hasn't fully turned orange yet. Some little guys and lots of interesting gourds. I might try to eat uh, a couple of these green ones. And my old uh, Italian made clippers work perfect for that. So. Yeah, at the end of the Halloween, you know, just pitch your seeds where you won't mind something growing, and uh, and next year you may ha not have to buy any pumpkins. All right. And this is a tree I transplanted. It was growing, you know, as a weed essentially in one of the planters uh, under another tree actually, and uh, transplanted it. I don't know, about a month ago, six weeks ago. It seems to be doing fine. I don't know what kind of tree it is, but it looks cool. It's kind of a reddish color. Here's an update on this little decorative uh, reddish colored tree that I transplanted. You can see it's got lots of uh, new growth. Most of the branch tips are sporting new growth. So I'm sure this one's gonna be fine. So something else that we uh, seem to grow in abundance around here, just on a volunteer basis, without planting them, is uh, blackberries. They grow just volunteer, wild around here all over the place, and you can see there's plenty ready to pick in there right now. So I'll have to get the kids out here when they get up and get to eating some blackberries. And this is another tree that I transplanted that was growing in a planter. I thought I got enough root, but it really struggled. It lost about 90% of its leaves, and I have been watering it a lot. Uh, multiple times a day, most days, unless it happens to be a rainy day. And uh, it has lost most of its leaves, but it still has some. And as long as it still has some green leaves... I will still hold out hope that it will recover and stay alive and uh, sprout new growth at least next spring or something. Um, so you can see it looks pretty sad. It always looks worst in the afternoon after the, the heat of the day. And in the morning these leaves will be a little more perked up. But you can see they're slowly browning. So I don't know. We'll see if it uh, comes through or not. And here's an update on the transplanted tree that did not do so well. It did lose most of its leaves. Um, and just when I was about to give up on it, it shot out a new growth at the bottom. <clears throat> and at first I was happy to see any growth, but then worried that it would just grow at the bottom and that the whole top of the tree would die. And then it wouldn't make for a very good tree. But, ta-da! There's new growth on this branch. And there's new growth here, right off the, the main trunk. And there is new growth at the tip of this branch. And there's new growth on the tip of this branch. So, I am now feeling uh, much more confident that this tree is going to be fine. New growth. New growth on this one as well. And this here is a volunteer tomato plant. And uh, it looks like it's starting to bear fruit. Which is kind of cool. So I just staked it and tied it up. These volunteer tomato plants uh, have been producing lots of cherry tomatoes for us. It's pretty cool. It's always nice to get volunteer produce. But um, these have just been great. Look at how big they've gotten. 
I've kind of just trained it up the uh, up the side of the stairs here and look at how many starting to ripen and this lovely little tree is a white oak and it is a sapling that I brought from Pennsylvania from the house where I grew up after my parents uh, sold the house the new people that moved in cut almost everything down including the magnificent white oak tree that you know we cherish so much oh well at least I've got a part of it still alive and uh, hopefully it will th thrive and flourish here and sprout more oak trees and here's an update on the white oak that I transplanted here from Pennsylvania. It has taken off like a weed this year. It has quite a lot of new growth. It has extended its height quite significantly and it is still going. So it is, uh, it should be fine. These oak trees are typically very tough and uh, now that this is well established, I'm thinking I might have to put some screen or fencing around it to make sure deer doesn't come along and eat the top off. Because uh, that would be sad. Uh, it wouldn't kill it, but it would it would stunt it yet again. <laughs> but I think it's going to be fine. And we also have some flowering vines called Clematis. And they're beautiful. And of course we have roses. Who doesn't have roses? And down there we've got peonies, though I think they're done for the season. And this giant bushy tree thing is a magnolia, but it's also done flowering for the season. And out here in the front yard, we happen to have, growing out the side of the magnolia, a mulberry tree. Uh, these grow like weeds here. They are in every planter, and I cut them out all the time. But some bigger ones that are in a good spot like this one will leave go so we can pick the mulberries. So when they're black and they come right off, they're ready to eat. Mm. And in the summertime, like just now, they are cool and refreshing. You wouldn't think they'd be cool and refreshing. But they are. And here again, the kids have had their fill. And there's still tons. And this is just one tree. We probably have three or four this size or bigger. And the berries are just everywhere. So, this is why I say we have a yarden. <laughs> not just a yard, and not a garden. A yarden. This is a particularly good view of all the mulberries on this tree. Ah, when the wind stopped, it's easier to keep them in focus. But, uh, it's just covered. This is something else we grow in abundance here, in Ohio anyway. Poison ivy. So uh, I'm told you guys don't have this in uh, England. If so, you're lucky, I guess. Because it's nasty stuff if you're allergic to it. Oh, and this is spice. I rescued her from a barn up the street before it was knocked down. And Mama just showed up with kittens. That's why she's called Mama. And Shadow showed up and followed around Thriller like a shadow. And of course, she's a black kitty. So, uh, really hard to see her even in a shadow. Look at her, she's so cute. And this one's Princess. She's old. She was the first cat to show up when we moved here. Yeah. 
Aww. She's a good kitty. But she still has claws. Ow. And there's this nice patch of flowers in here. I don't know what they're called. But they're beautiful. And they come up every year all by themselves. Something else I've been letting grow in multiple places throughout my yard and is uh, oak trees. I have noticed uh, when mowing, especially later in the summer, if you go a few weeks without mowing uh, and then pay attention, you'll find little oak trees all over the place. And this is the only naturally occurring oak tree in the tree line. Um, but we get the, the little oak trees throughout the yard, it seems. And, um, you know, there's ones as far away as, as there's a sapling. And out there under the maple tree, that's an oak tree. So, <clears throat> they grow, and they're always trying to grow. And if you mow them down, the little stem, even if it's two inches tall, it doesn't seem to mind. The roots continue to grow. And if you ever stop mowing it in just a few years, you have a nice little oak tree. So uh, they're always there just waiting for their turn it seems like. It's very hard to kill an oak sapling. And looky there, just walking through the yard, there's another oak tree. Trying to grow. I mean, if I if I mowed if I tried to not mow them all, I couldn't really mow my yard. I don't think because they'd be everywhere. Something else we seem to grow in abundance here is juicy spiders. Looks like he's got a nice tasty stink bug. Mmm, mmm, good eating. <laughs> that time of year, I guess. Spider webs. Everywhere. Cool spider webs. It really must have been a spider web building night last night. It's crazy how many spider webs. Even inside the triangle. <laughs> Ooh, and there's one. That's a big one. Under the eaves. All over my lovely chime. Downright spooky. Here's another one right here. <laughs> oh, geez. All right. <laughs> This guy was kind of above me. There we go. Creepy. His, na his web's a little bit warped. This is a cool wind chime. Made from old silverware. I didn't make it. I bought it. But it's neat. 
but my nice wind chime really does sound great. I don't know how good the microphone on this is going to do, but listen. Hopefully that sounds as good to you as it does to me.